Welcome back, everyone. Cooking and Culture, a nonprofit organization, is bringing those two worlds together, all to benefit marginalized people in our community. So, here to talk about the O'Noir Foundation are co founders Cindy Sokoloff and Christina Stein. So, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for, thank having, you for having us. We talked a little bit about this before the show, too. So, I'm curious, I want to know how the O'Noir Foundation was created. Um, it was created because we are both experts in our field, um, Sydney in food and me in fashion. Um, and we thought we want to do something for our community. We're both a part of this beautiful community and we thought, how can we help? And we said, well, I'm good at this, you're good at this, let's see what we can make. I love it. And what is your mission? So our mission is to help homeless LGBTQ youth and young adults with housing, shelter, and also marginalized communities. So this year we're focusing on drag and the transgendered community as well. That is really important too. So mm -hmm. um, local shows, this is a big thing, local shows have been canceled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because of threats yeah. that have been made, yeah. which first off is not right. No. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you believe that this organization is needed now more than ever? Well, I think the community needs that voice. I mean, I think it's being misappropriated and I think drag is something for everybody. I mean, it's welcoming to all ages. I mean, if it's over the age of 21, they, should, they notate that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something, it's a community, it's an art form, and it's creative expression. It is. Yeah, and this year we really wanted to focus um, on the drag community. You know, not a lot of people know that uh, bulk culture and drag culture is a part and responsible for a lot of things that are going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really important to celebrate this art and say that this is a great place for anyone to be in where you feel accepted and loved and nurtured. I cannot tell you how many times I went to a drag show, maybe in my lowest points, just to mm -hmm. feel happy and loved and you know, accepted. So you yeah. want to show that this year. Chance to be yourself. It, it is. is a chance mm -hmm. to be yourself. That's the most important thing is yes. to be you. And I always say you're the only you there will ever be. Exactly. Yeah. So embrace it. And you get one chance. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you guys have an annual fundraiser coming up. Yes. yes. So <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what that's going to look like. Uh, well, this year it is our third year, so it's going to be yes. bigger and better than it Ooh. ever has been um, without revealing too much. But um, in, in lieu of designers for you know the five courses that we have, I said, let's have drag queens. Mm -hmm. um, let's have drag performances. Let's have them. I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but drag queens create their own costumes. They do their own makeup. I mean, they are the artists creating the art on their canvas. And so I was like, Forget the fashion, we're just gonna have them do their artwork and showcase that for one of the dishes, so. And I think the point of our event too is to create a space where you can be vulnerable and show your expression and be yourself. So by taking the fashion elements and turning it into food mm -hmm. and making the challenge of it being all black, because food is mostly not black, so it, yeah. it creates this new environment and experience. Oh, that is yeah. fun. It really pushes people's senses. I mean, yes. everybody that walks away is like, I've never been to anything like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to be a part of the community to enjoy it. You can yeah. just come and enjoy a creative space, some artists. Um, great food. Great oh. food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so it's five courses, five designers, um, and just a whole evening full of art and fun. Oh. And one of the things I will, I guess, announce today is our, we have five local chefs. So one of the big things is local talent. And so this year we have five new chefs. We have Kimberly Haw. We have Steve Moorhead. Um, we have Jamilka Borges from Lilith. Um, we have uh, Julio Peraza, and we have uh, we have a new chef, Selena Proger, from Eleven. That's amazing. And you guys have an event coming up this weekend. Yes. We do. Well, kind of. It's a pseudo event. It's called Bubbles and Brunch. I do it with my partner Camilla, oh, uh, Camilla and Court on Instagram, and so we do it as a sub event of Onoir to help raise money for the foundation. Mm -hmm. And it's a three course brunch pairing event. We pick local chefs and we have drag this time too. I love that. I've heard of drag brunch before. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so much fun. I need to go. Have you been? Yes. No. You, you should have come to. on Saturday. I know, I should. Um, literally, I want to know how long it actually takes to do the drag makeup because it is amazing. It can vary and they're very detailed and it is, I mean, they look more beautiful than some women. Right? Like, I swear. <laughs> I'm like, I want to do my makeup like yes. this. Oh. I think they said, I think my friend told me three hours, three, four hours. No. Sometimes. I think that's a minimum. Yeah. Just depending. It's amazing. I yeah. slap everything on in like five minutes, so I feel like I need some <laughs> lessons from that. I've never tried. Maybe once, oh. one day. My husband will come home and I'll be a new Sydney with a Y. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so what are your plans for the future? 
Oh gosh, we don't know. I mean, this started so small and we were like, we'll just try it this year and see what happens. And then, you know, it just kind of grew. So sky's the limit. We do have other cities that have approached us about having it in their cities. So um, Cleveland, Philly, a couple places that are like, hey, so maybe our city. And so maybe that's how it can grow. And I think in terms of goals too, we worked with Proud Haven as our primary beneficiary and they give the actual resources to the homeless youth and the LGBTQ, the youth and the young adults and have the emergency shelter. So the first year we raised around $5,000. Last year was 15,000 and our goal hopefully is to keep doubling that number and just giving back. And we're also working with sisters, PGH as well, or we'd like mm -hmm. to donate to them to focus on the transgendered community too. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So what's your favorite part about doing this? <laughs> oh, I love all the fashion elements and how it like when you see the food come out and you see how the chef was inspired by the fashion or vice versa like they really come together and work together to create this dish and then you have the guests saying like oh I see like that little element in there like it's very interesting how people interpret the dishes coming out and the fashion coming out. It's very inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. I really have to check this out. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining today. Thank I'm so happy I us. met you guys, and I'm going to be talking yeah. to yes. you guys a lot more because yes. it's so interesting and we'll it's see amazing. You again. Yes, yes we for will. sure. We'll be back. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, coming up next on Talk Pittsburgh, we're learning about more local efforts to support the LGBTQ community, this time through the arts and media. It's Tuesday, June 20th. Thanks for joining us for Talk Pittsburgh. We'll be right back after the break.